On the island of Sodor, there are lots of different engine teams serving many kinds of railways. There's the Tidmouth Steam Team that serves from Napford to Vickerstown and the Northwestern Railway branch lines, the Narrow Gauge Team operating the Scarloli Railway, and the Minimum Gauge Team working for the small Arnoldsdale Railway. And there's also the Napford Steam Team, consisting of Arthur, Murdoch, Molly, Neville, and Billy. It was their job to serve Norrenby, the coaling plant, the wharf, and Brendam Docks. And together, they enjoy their jobs that make them feel really useful in any way. One day, while Thomas was shunting at the docks, he said, Phew! Then he saw Arthur passing with some empty wagons. Hello, Arthur, teased Thomas, following your nose to this fishy smell, huh? Arthur pretended he hadn't heard. Then Thomas saw Neville arriving. He was looking sad. Cheer up, Neville, whistled Thomas. It may be smelly here, but the clouds are all swept away by the smiling sun. I know, sighed Neville, but I think that's the best for me and my team. What are you talking about? asked Thomas. We've been criticized lately that we have silly obsessions, Neville replied, and take our work too seriously. I even heard Diesel tell Arthur, we Diesels can control your nose-blinding fish smell addiction as the best team around, because of his enjoyment for the fishing route. I owe Arthur an apology, thought Thomas. I guess we're just generic workaholics, finished Neville. Stuff and nonsense, said Thomas. Molly and Billy have been keeping the wharf in good order for me and James. You and Murdoch are great with freight. And with Arthur's spotless record, you all make for important determination. Just like my steam team. <coughs> Neville felt a little bit better afterwards. But his teammates were yet to get such inspiration. That evening, Molly and Billy were arguing about today. I'm telling you, that car could have fallen into that kennel thanks to you shutting those cars out so unexpectedly, said Billy. You weren't supposed to give Colin those crates to unload till later, replied Molly. Now the workmen are laughing at us harder than last week. Will you please stop the fighting, snapped Murdoch. The noisy, troublesome trucks have already done it for me. Okay, okay said Neville kindly. No need to try each other's patience. Murdoch looked embarrassed. I'm sure the Tidmid Steam Team gets bad feedback too. Not as much as we do. But they seem to have a good way of proving their importance. We should have one of our own. But what? asked Molly. Oh, I know, exclaimed Arthur. Neville, Sir Tubman says I need another engine to help with an extra load of fish for our local markets and the wharf. Maybe you could be my helper while Murdoch tackles some of your daily freight to show how useful we are. I hadn't taken some fish for quite some time, but it sounds like it could work. Yeah. Agreed Murdoch. I like my slow, quiet times. 
but a good long heave is good exercise. All in good team spirit, I suppose, said Molly. Billy's eyes rolled, while Molly's words echoed in Neville's head. Next day, Sir Topham Hatt was testing a new office chair when he got a call on his cell phone. Oh, bother the cell phone! The call was from a yard manager asking about Arthur's idea, which Sir Topham had agreed to. Yep, he thought. A lot of work for three engines, but even I sometimes like to get ripped tonight. <laughs> Soon, Neville was eagerly ready to start work. At the fishing village, Arthur had Neville's fish train ready and waiting for him. Hoo-wee! puffed Neville. It's smellier here than at the docks. It's a piece of cake to get used to, said Arthur. A piece of crab cake, that is joke one of the fishermen. Now why doesn't this little shrimp come through in a pinch? Now just remember, continued Arthur, each pair of cars on your train is for the different towns and the wharf. Unfortunately, the short way to the wharf is closed due to the tide damage, so you'll have to make it there as your final destination. And don't forget to leave the cars behind your brake fan at Balahu. I'll come back for them later. Right, said Neville. Everyone wants their fish, and the little engines can't deliver some of it to their own shops till it reaches the wharf first. Let's just hope our critics will think differently after this. Surely with an achievement of an important cargo, finished Arthur, they should be reminded that we have our fair share of care. Okay, agreed Neville. Well, see you later, Arthur. And Neville pulled away. Oh no, someone cried out. We forgot to uncouple that band of bricks for the new village house. But it was too late. Neville and Arthur both had already gotten too busy. At Balahoo Station, Neville's conductor asked the workmen, Are you sure you want us to leave these last three freight cars right next to the platform? Positively, said one of them. We're used to Arthur doing it so he can continue on faster. Besides, added another workman, not many other engines use this line nowadays. So once Neville's tail end was uncoupled, he set off quickly for Great Waterton. Hey, wait! There's bricks in this cargo van! Out of my way! I'm trying to take a shortcut to the forest around Harvey's rail replacing on the main line. Neville puffed proudly along. With his wheels clattering and his steam puffing white, he felt like a really helpful engine. We may be absent-minded, but we are important, he chugged. Then, Neville had to stop for Murdoch and his extra freight cars. You're doing well today, called Neville. Thank you, Murdoch called back. He had a long train, though. Neville anxiously watched and waited. Must be on time, must be on time, he puffed, all in good team spirit. Before long, Neville arrived at Great Waterton. The workmen were glad to see him. They wanted the fish from Neville's front cars for PL Grocery Store, but it took longer than expected to unload on the small platform. Neville became more worried about being late for the wharf, so when the workmen were finished at last, 
Neville sped off. One of your doors is loose! shouted a workman, but Neville couldn't hear. I'm the spirit of the Napford Steam Team, he tooted. I can pull us all through. But far ahead down the line, a new walking trail crossing was half done. The building crew had gone off to get replacement tools, unaware of Neville. When Neville rushed over the crossing, part of it broke loose and jolted one of the cars off the line, and its door slid open. The building crew wouldn't be happy with what they'd see and smell. I told you we should have used this welding equipment from the start. Neville had felt a jerk, but he thought the conductor was testing his van's brakes. I hope I'm not going too fast for him, he thought. But what does he know? I've got a team to support. Slow down, Neville! yelled his driver, and the train quickly came to a halt. Dead ahead of them was a set of rusty old rails close to a deep, murky ditch. <laughs> they must have ran out of time to fix them during the last track inspection, said the driver. Neville was nervous. It didn't look safe. But he knew this was the only way to the wharf. If a little engine could face a time-traveling Terminator, he told himself, anything could be faced by any engine. After taking a deep breath, Neville slowly began to roll onto the rust-brown rails. I'm gonna fall in! I'm gonna fall in! He cried as the rails sagged. You can do it, Neville, encouraged the driver. It's not too far. I can make it, thought Neville. All in good Nafford Steam Team spirit. All in good Nafford Steam Team spirit. I made it! I made it! Yippee! Hey, what the heck? But the real surprise for Neville and his crew came as a familiar bystander with a red flag. Sir Topham Hatt had heard of what had been happening today by text messages on his phone. Neville, you've been a very naughty engine. What were you thinking today? I was just trying to be really useful, sir, Neville replied. I wanted to support my team with some spirit. All you did was turn all my trust into a big waste, Sir Topham had said sternly. You took some of the bricks for a new fishing village house, blocked Henry's way at Balahu, forcing him on a detour, messed up the new walking trail crossing, and left one of your loaded cars behind. Sir gasped Neville. I don't know how I made it all happen. I only listened to Arthur's instructions and... Well, it looks like you've misunderstood them. All my engines, no matter the team they're each part of, are expected to learn by their mistakes. And I guess you're still doing it. Neville was disappointed and confused. But then they heard... Wait! Wait! There was Arthur rushing up with Harvey the crane engine. Sir! Said Arthur. Neville's not at fault for this. I am. And Arthur explained all of his doings. So, while retrieving the forgotten brick car after arranging your fish train for Brendam, you offered it to Henry when he was returning from the forest? Asked Sir Topham Hatt. Yes. Arthur went on. It's lucky Henry had only been giving Wilbert some sawmill cars. So he was glad to take my train for me. Then Arthur found me while trying to warn Neville about the rusty rails. I had just finished my work on the main line when he asked me to come help. Thank goodness you made it across, Neville. Uh, yes, uh, thank goodness, said Neville, looking stunned. Well, Sir Topham had said to Harvey, 
I was going to call your driver about a derailed fish car that a construction crew messaged me about. As soon as Neville clears this line, can you rescue his missing car and follow him and the rest of his train with it? Yes, sir, answered Harvey. I'll wait on the nearest mainline siding, and the rusty line should be okay for a smaller engine like me with or without some cars. Yes, indeed, agreed Sir Top of Hat, but still, take care. That goes to you too, Neville. I apologize for blaming all the trouble on you, and I understand helping others is your hobby, but no more risking your weight limit on weak tracks again. You could have made it worse today. I know, sir. I'm sorry too, said Neville. And I forgive you as well, Arthur, finished Sir Topham Hat. You needed a new branch line partner anyway. Now please be Neville's brake fan for the rest of his way to the wharf. Yes, sir. Don't worry, sir. Said Arthur. So, with Arthur coupled bunker first to Neville's train, they set out together at once. They chugged and they chuffed. They clattered and they huffed. They rolled gently and safely across the main line. All in good team spirit, huh, Neville? Encouraged Arthur. But Neville wasn't listening. He wasn't thinking about team spirit now. He kept a close lookout for anything dangerous. The line stayed clear as Neville and Arthur took good care. At last, the wharf started to surround them. The yard manager stood before them, waiting. Oh, sorry we're late, panted Neville anxiously. Well, good news. For you only, said the yard manager. We had to reschedule due to the concerns of a missing narrow-gauge fish van coupling. If only Scarloli hadn't needed some of the spare ones for his goods train. Hey, don't look at me. I was trying to help him find them. Neville and Arthur were relieved they made it. But Neville was still not happy. What will the critics say about us now, he thought. Hey, Neville, said Colin the Crane. My operator heard from Sir Topham Hatt's text message that you went over a rusty truck today. Yeah, sighed Neville. It was a silly thing to do, I know. But brave, too, added Colin. My operator wants you to know that he said well done. Then, Harvey came in with Neville's missing car. The construction workers fixed a loose store latch on this thing, he explained. And they want to thank you, Neville, for a good opportunity to test their new tools. And you, Arthur, for making it happen. Neville was puzzled. Then he heard a workman talking on his walkie-talkie. That much freight? Really? Well, tell Murdoch I said keep it up. And I'll meet you there for the unloading, as soon as I find my girlfriend's borrowed makeup kit. Otherwise, she'll kill me. Guys, I think I realized something, declared Neville to his teammates. It's not our skills that's the problem we've been having. It's our feelings. Maybe the critics will never get us, but maybe they go through pain of their own. And we're just making ourselves forget about the friends we have outside our team who appreciate us. Plenty of them, even if their own engine teams, or even human teams, can't mix with us. Maybe we can't ever please everyone, but we have our reasons and uses all the time, because we do them all the time. And to do all the spirit about it, it takes everyone to do it, as a team. But there's still always that nutty buddy with every team interrupted the yard manager, looking at Billy. I'll get some cars ready. The missing coupling! My girlfriend's makeup kit! Oh, whew. This is the last time I pretend to be James Charles during break time. Thanks, Billy. And sooner or later, forgiveness and letting go. Uh, yeah, surely. 
thank you. After the fish made it to the narrow gauge railway markets, Neville became Arthur's new branch line partner, and he and his team stopped worrying about themselves. Within the next weeks, they continued to be criticized, but they now knew they were truly important and not as different as they thought. With Sir Topham Hatt proud of them for learning and working so hard every day, they were all very happy they were a team just for Nafford. And so, it goes to show, all any team really needs to show some encouraging spirit was each other. <laughs> Ugh, guess I should have let my ashtray get checked. Silly, Silly really? really?